Michigan FFA program and chapter growth is moving in a positive direction. Over the last five years, there's been an increase in the number of FFA programs and the number of agriculture educators in the state. Program growth has occurred really across our entire state. Interestingly enough, this year we have a new program right in the middle of Michigan in Clinton County. We have one in Marcellus, which is in southwest Michigan, and Ida, which is in southeast Michigan. Last year we added programs in the UP. So I don't think there's any one spot that's adding programs. It's more uh, when conditions get right and program growth can occur, it can occur anywhere in our state. Part of program growth has been growth in the number of students that we have that are, again, prepared to be teachers. Um, it's a lot of work to build a new program. If you don't see a person that could be the instructor on the horizon, it's hard to put that work in and then find no teacher and then have no program. The fact that we've had more students come through Michigan State and be prepared to teach, I think has also helped the, to grow the number of programs because we have more potential candidates to hire. So I think that's been a big help. As far as numbers go, in the last six years, we have increased 20 ag teachers in Michigan. So we now have 141 in the 21-22 school year teachers in ag education. Our program numbers has also increased by five and will grow three more this year. So we're gonna be up to a total of around 124 programs in our state of Michigan in 22-23. And I also anticipate our teacher numbers to be up about five from last year too. So we're probably looking at more like 146 to 147 teachers this coming year compared to the 141 last year, which I said was already up 20 from the last five or six years. As far as our membership goes, 1920 was the highest number of members in FFA we had since 1979. And our FFA membership was just short of 9,000. Um, this year we've rebounded from a lower number during, due to COVID. And this year we're just about at 8,800. So we're almost right back to that highest level that we've had since the late 70s, early 80s. So it's encouraging to see the number of membership and the number of students in our programs is on the uptick. The number of students that participate that didn't necessarily grow up in an agricultural background has grown all of my 36 years in ag education. The number of students that lived on a farm or lived in an agricultural background, you know, grew up with that background has dropped. So somehow we still have more students today than we had in the 80s, <laughs> yet we have less students that come from an agricultural background. So we're exposing more and more students and quite frankly, we need to do an even better job of that. We've got more room to grow here. The agricultural industry needs more help. There's really intelligent people that don't know that a career in agriculture exists, and if we can show it to them, that might be the key to solving some of our agricultural issues as far as hirings and the people we need to fill needed positions in our industry. Without question, I mean, I taught high school for 30 years, so I can tell you some things that I saw as a teacher that were effects because of strong programs that I was able to be part of. And I think that there's kind of two or three layers to that. The first one is it helps students identify careers in agriculture that they never thought of. They don't think of communications that occur in agriculture. They think it's just farming. But they forget that there's seeds and agronomists and, and engineers and communication specialists. And until that program comes around, those windows don't really open for kids yet. They don't see those opportunities. So communities don't see those opportunities. So that'd be like the first layer is that I think that happens. The next thing that happens is there isn't an FFA chapter in Michigan that doesn't have community service as part of what they do. And so they really have an impact in their community, whether it's a food drive or, you know, Food for America programs that they do in conjunction sometimes with Project Red and Michigan Farm Bureau. That has an impact on the community because of community service and what community service is. I have no statistics to back it up. I just know I have a whole lot of former students that are volunteer firemen, a whole lot of former students that volunteer in EMS. That, give back to their community because they learn to do it early in their careers, like when they were young people. So that kind of thing is really measurable. Small towns tend to export brains. Our brightest and best become something someplace else. That doesn't mean our brightest and best don't stay home, but the ones that are in our ag programs tend to stay home sometimes. So they're the positive members of our community, whether it's on a school board or a township board or Farm Bureau Board, so that you're engaging leadership in your community by having an ag program. That's really what's happening. So students learn about committee, uh, commu careers, communities get new leaders and leadership. And then finally, I guess the last thing that I think would be really important is, is just the development of young people, period. You know, it's just hard to quantify how much that can help them as they move forward. So those would be, I think, the three biggest things that communities get when they start an ag program in FFA chapter.